thank you for coming to my channel. I do appreciate every viewer that views these videos each week. And we are still on the topic of the prophet and prophecy and how it is very relevant today and how we can judge correctly and righteously who is a true prophet and who is a false prophet. And I'm going to start with Deuteronomy because that is the foundation of the the uh, the uh, the criteria criterias of a prophet. They, these are this is the standard. This is what we should be uh, evaluating a prophet if if they are of God and if they're these fruits are manifest good or bad, we need to judge them by their fruit. So we need to look at Deuteronomy 13. And it says, If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign of the wonder comes to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that, that dreamer or dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments, and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him, and cleave unto him. And that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams, shall be put to death, because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt, and redeemed you out of the house of bondage, to thrust thee out of the way, which the Lord thy God command thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. So, and it says, e, uh, Even I mean, if thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or thy wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee, secretly saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy father, namely of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one from the one end to the earth, even until the other end of the earth. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shall thine eyes pity him, neither shall thou spare, neither shall thou conceal him, or or say that you know, because you don't want judgment to come upon them. So most people make uh, make uh, excuses or they kind of let things pass. They give allowances to the prophet. They, they so deem and honor the ones that they have some kind of uh, feeling or personal feeling they may like certain characteristics of this prophet they might like his personality or or even it could be a woman they you may like their personality they they may be friendly they may be they may have been uh been very benevolent to you very kind to you and so there's a lot of things that are at stake there's a lot of things that are in play when we look and we judge a prophet and a, a prophetess that we need to take in consideration because the, it, these people that the Lord is speaking in this passage of scripture are close friends or even relatives, even, close connections, people that you probably have fellowship with, built relationships, on, done, done personal things uh, in your life with. Uh, you, you trust them. They've, they've, uh, you 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 put your confidence and trust in them, and so it's very very hard to to uh, to say someone is a false prophet or especially to those that we've really grown fond of. So 
this is why we have to look at the the prophecy and the character and where where is it leading you i mean what is the fruit what is it manifesting is it manifesting the fruits of the spirit or is it manifesting uh idolatry and and it, or covetousness or or is it inflating someone's ego and so anyways we really have to take a we have to take a, a consider all these things before we can deem someone as a man or a woman of God that is speaking on his, on their behalf. And I did. I'm looking for some because I did write some things down, and I want to go through it here in a minute. I uh, kind of forgot about it, but as the Lord wills, I will try to find it. This is like my scratch pad <laughs> that I just kind of put my ideas in Let's see uh, if I can find what it was where did I wrote that mm. Mm. maybe it was ah. another one yes see yes because I'm going to do some comparisons here on the fruits of the Spirit and the working of the gifts. And I got this from Smith Wigglesworth. Uh, he was teaching on how the fruits of the Spirit, the sp fruits of the Spirit and the gifts, how they, they, co they coincide with each other. And so, but I'm going to get into that more in a, in a, in a bit, but... I thought that was a really good revelation because God will train you first in the fruit of uh, and the character of which the gift and the office uh, and the office of the gift before he will even allow you to use the gift or the office. So this is why we must we must form the characteristics of God. We need to be Make sure that our loyalty is to the God of Israel, the Lord Jesus Christ, and that we speak according to the Holy Spirit, and we don't waver from that. Even if if, if it comes, if the persecution comes, people reject you. People, uh, you know, the it may you may suffer because of it. We still hold to the loyalty of Jesus, His ministry. And this is why people who have dreams, have visions, have words, prophetic words, and they don't line up with this word, and they don't, they don't have the character. And people can emulate the fruits of the Spirit. Doesn't necessarily mean they have the fruits of the Spirit. The, because it's one, it's one gift. It's a fruit. And it's by the uh, the giver of the gift, which is the Holy Spirit. So you must be endowed or filled with the Spirit of God. And you must be led by the Spirit. And His character must be formed up in you. And He, and when he will forge you and form you into His likeness, into His image. Into his, and He will, uh, he will uh, connect with you on his level so whatever his heart is it should be your heart so there's a connection there is a joining of spirit your spirit with his spirit your heart with his heart and and so you will feel the pains you will feel the agony you will feel the the grievances you'll feel the passion you will feel the authority you will feel you will feel his heart whatever that word is going forth whatever the, he wants to administrate in in the miraculous or in the signs and wonders it's got to be with his heart and he is going to make sure that the heart of god is expressed first before the prophetic word and, and a lot of times we're seeing prophetic words but it's not expressed by the heart of god it's it's coming from another spirit because there's no change there's no fruit there's they there's uh there is no uh uh long suffering and mercy that is that is coupled with the uh the disciplines and the judgment 
So they're, they, they, they go hand in hand. Mercy and judgment go hand in hand. So you speak mercy and you speak judgment at the same time with the same passion and heart of God to reprove sin, to make corrections, but to extend mercy and grace and love at the same time. And that's very hard to do because we become very dogmatic. We become very uh, insolent and angry and we get, we get that righteous indignation within us. And we, and even though we speak truth, maybe we're speaking truth, but we're not speaking with in accordance to the heart of God. It's, it, it, it is it's inflamed us so it's it really it's in the flesh that is the that is incited and not the spirit so this is why the word in season not always we step out when we see air when we see uh the problems within the body of christ or problems within the faith or problems with scripture and air and stuff we just don't always step out but we always need to be led by the spirit because we don't want to do damage to the body of christ we want to edify console the body of christ and we want to instruct in righteousness that that is the goal and so when we have a dream or a vision or or a prophetic word and prophecy is is preaching too it's 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 speaking on the behalf of god to minister a a revelatory word at the moment that god wants you to speak it to, even into a congregation to an individual or just uh to yourself sometimes god will give you revelation he gives you a word of prophetic word or he'll speak uh or make alive his own word that is targeting you or targeting your situation so uh, so it's not always a, a a a word that is speaking of a future futuristic event, but is speaking in accordance to the power of God to get a message across to make straight paths ways unto the God. That's what it's about. So we need we really need to understand that a prophet and the office of a prophet uh, and the uh, and that gift is is a uh, is a is an office which which works within the signs and wonders within the the gifts of 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 demonstrated power but first we must be able to contain the word of god within ourselves to be able to deliver it when it needs to be delivered and and knowing when god wants to speak a word of wisdom, knowledge, or correction, but first we got to receive it unto ourselves, judge ourselves in the faith, and then uh, be discerning to when to use that word, and, and and allow the Holy Spirit to have full leadership. So there is a lot of discipline that goes with prophecy, and I'm going to get into that too, because this is because this is what it's about it's about discipline and anyways we'll we'll keep going so this is so if we look at uh at revelation it says uh and i it says uh revelation 19 it says and i fell at his feet to worship him and he said unto me see thou do it not do it not i am the fellow servant and thy brethren that has the testimony of yeshua jesus worship god for the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy so or the testimony that's uh, uh the evident the uh the scriptures testify of him so jesus is this authority that empowers prophecy he is the spirit of prophecy so he has been uh he is the the epitome of scripture because the old testament is all about is all about his uh messianic position and uh it speaks of his and him and his sacrifice and his kingdom so it, when we look at 
the Old Testament, we look towards Christ. And when we get into the New Covenant or the New Testament, it, it looks back to uh, to the cross or back to, to Christ. So Christ is the apex. Jesus Christ is the uh, the the pivotal apex, uh, the epic center of the revelation of Scripture. Uh, the 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 prophets. The Bible says that the prophets of old were inspired. Let's see. Let me look here. it says it says and we have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto you do well that you take he as unto life that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart so we have this sure word of prophecy it says knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation so the revelation of jesus christ is been revealed and penned in scripture so everything about him and his ministry his kingdom and his body his sacrifice everything has been laid out in scripture so and so we he, he is this revelation this revelation of uh that uh that we must first get a hold of we must see that he is in the volume of the scrolls that it that everything that was done even in the temple service everything that was was illustrated in the uh old testament or the tanakh is to show us christ to show his show his uh preeminence that the father elevated him that that there is there is a kingdom that we must come into and we and we need to put him in his place this is why it was it's been said even uh let me look here it says uh in first corinthians 2 it, it says paul this, as Paul says, and I, brother, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you, Jesus Christ, and him crucified. So his uh, testimony and his preaching or his proclamation and his supernatural abilities to see visions to to get a word of knowledge to speak prophetically to be able to instruct in righteousness his apostleship which coincide with the prophetic uh giftings because uh, his main job was uh was to establish the church to lay a, a good foundation for the church so but this is why he preached nothing. So supernatural signs and wonders come at the preaching of the gospel. Uh, and it says this, and, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but demonstration of the spirit and power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them, that are perfect, yet not wisdom that is of the world, nor of the princes of the world that come to naught, come to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. This is where this is in a mystery. <laughs> that means secret, hidden, a uh, hidden. That means that the things that were hidden from the foundations of the earth is now being revealed in Messiah. And the things that are of Messiah are all about this unseen kingdom that is without observation. That is that is that is within. And so the mystery or the hidden wisdom is Christ, because He is the Spirit of prophecy. So any prophet, true prophet, is always going to point you to Christ. Is always going to lead you to to the office of Jesus Christ. He, it, it, it's always going to funnel everything into what what he is building. 
not it what we're building here on earth is what he is building it, it, it's it's with purpose the god doesn't speak unless there's purpose involved so anyways let me get comfortable here <laughs> Ah, thank you, Jesus. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto his glory. But, and then also said, with none the princes of the world, if they'd known, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. So this is why Jesus being preached is the spirit of prophecy. Because it's spirit. It's a, a pneuma or ruach, the breath, the essence, the nature of Christ. It's to, to elevate or promote him. It's to exalt him, put him in his place. He will be with those who lift him up, who, who bring him into that great stature. Praise God. And so, it's, and let me go here. It says, let, let's see. And it says in Acts 5, 39 and 42, but if it be of God, which the apostles, you know, when they came preaching, they came preaching uh, Christ. They ceased not to preach him. And it says in Acts 5, 38, 42, So I am telling you, hand, hands off these men, let them alone. If this program of this work is merely human, it will fall apart. But if it is of God, there is nothing you can do about it. And you are better not to be found fighting against God. That convinced them. They called the apostles back in after giving them the thoroughly whip them they uh warned them not to speak in the name of jesus and they sent him off so the officials the uh, religious hierarchy commanded them not to speak in the name of jesus because this would be a violation to their religious order and so they did not want Jesus' name or Jesus to be uh, promoted or his fame to reach uh, to the ends of the earth. So they were stopping the progression of the gospel. And this is what religion does. Religion stops the progression of and the advancement of the kingdom of God or the kingdom that has been established by Jesus in the heavens. Because that's where supernatural manifestations flow. You've got to get connected to that kingdom. You got to get you got to get in line with the spirit of of Christ, the law of the spirit in Christ Jesus. You need to you need to be uh, walking by faith and 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 receiving from God. You know, and allowing Him to fill you with his spirit so he can change you to be able to hear from heaven be able to uh to condition your mind and your heart and and your vessel to be able to receive so you can express this kingdom outwardly that that's the that's the objective is to express the kingdom of god from within outwardly so you know we receive from god from a from an a eternal kingdom he demonstrates himself through us and then we express those things outwardly to the to the vessels around us it's it's Christ in you the hope of glory Christ manifests that's the mystery that's been concealed that Christ is now being developed in you and now it's not I that live, but Christ lives in me. This is why Paul could say, in him I live and move and have my being. He no longer seen himself separate from Christ, from, from, from his connection, relationship, and his, uh, and his uh, 
and his life was his life wasn't about himself it was all about him so it, it, it see we've got to get a new uh, a new mentality because our our mind thinks of selfish thoughts doesn't think about God we're not even God conscious most people don't even think about God on a you know regularly you know they may think about him once a day I, I mean and that's you know that's just generously speaking but most of the time they don't even think about him until the weekend like Sunday or Sabbath or Saturday or whatever or Wednesday night or someone brings it to their attention they're not God conscious so they don't think about God in their daily life they don't pray uh, and seek God's will for daily day decisions but this was not like that with the Apostles because the Apostles were joined with Christ Christ manifest himself through him he was they were an extension that's what the body is it's an extension of Christ Christ is the head he's in the unseen but we are his body here on earth so it's an extension from what is from heaven they didn't see themselves separate from their head there he was the head he made the decisions he he orchestrated his will in the earth through them and it was no longer they that lived but Christ lived in them and they were not going about doing their own thing they were not involved in worldly affairs they were not involved with with the the uh, entertainments of the world the celebrations they were they were not in, they were not involved in in the uh, the political and religious formats of, of the world they they cease not to preach Christ that's the difference because we have one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom of God we we're, we ride the fence we want the pleasures of this life but and we also want the benefits of the gospel and it's it's a divesting of one life for another life so this is why nothing actually is getting done with within the kingdom of God because there is no abstaining there's no sacrifices there's no putting away there's no separation of the world there is there is this the this mindset that God is somewhere on you know is set aside he's on a uh, on a shelf somewhere and I, then I go pick him up when I'm ready to uh, to get him involved in my life that's not how it works this is not where the gospel is the gospel is not about putting him on a shelf and going like an idol and going to that idol when you need something when you when you uh, when you're in uh, you find yourselves in dire situations or when you need uh, you know your bills paid or you need a healing or you need a you know you need deliverance at the moment you're going through some oppression you're going through some difficulty now you need God now you need uh, his uh, benefits and but in the meantime you're not you you put them on a shelf somewhere you've not cultivated this walk or relationship you've not even uh, brought him in, into mind when things are good when things seems to be going well we see we tend to forget about him it's when those bad times comes we go to the shelf and we take our our image of God and we put it before us and we pray pray to this image and never developed a relationship with with a personal God this is where the body of Christ lacks and what do we do we we get involved with the world's affairs we get involved with people that are not uh, benefiting us we get involved in relationships that are that are hindering our walk with Christ so God the body suffers violence the kingdom of God suffers violence because it is not being uh, being uh, administrated properly it's not being told what we need to do to see the power see the anointing and see the true giftings of God operate in our midst because 
it, because the true power of God manifesting in your life will cause Satan to go haywire and cause the kingdoms of darkness to go uh, fanatic on you. And then there's nothing but assaults and persecution and difficulty and, and, and deformation of character, you know, slander, uh, accusations. Uh, there's constantly defending yourself. There's, so there's just problems, problems, problems. Because now Christ is manifesting in you. Now the power of God is can uh, can be on display, and that's what he fears. Because if it is on display or not on display, Satan knows who who is who uh, has the power of God working in them. He knows. See, Paul, I know Jesus, I know Paul, and I. But who who are you? I don't know you. Because you have not, you have not made your name known in the spirit realm. See, you, you've got to be, uh, you've got to be famous in the spirit realm. It do, it doesn't matter about the exterior. If the spirit realm knows you, then you're a threat. And if the and if you're a threat, then he's going to uh, try to put out that threat before you realize that you are a threat to the enemy and use your weapons against him. That's what he, he fears. That he does not want Christ manifested. He doesn't want Jesus to step into you, extend his hands through you, speak in, out of your mouth. He, do, he doesn't want you to be completely yielded to the spirit. So what does he do? He assaults the flesh. He assaults the flesh because he wants you to get your mind off the spirit and onto the flesh. He wants you to start thinking about carnal things. He wants you to start thinking about worldly things. So what does he do? He starts attacking your finances. He starts attacking uh, your, uh, your loved ones and your friends. And he starts making problems for you out here in this, in this life so that your mind is is preoccupied on those matters instead of focusing on on your duties to live for him and to express him in the earth he wants you out of the spirit and walking in the flesh but we've got to maintain a life in the spirit those who walk in the spirit will not fulfill the lust of the flesh but those who, who walk in the flesh they will fulfill it so he's constantly wanting you to go into the flesh to stop your development, your progression, and your ability to be able to destroy his work here on earth. We've, we've got to get a single mind, a mind that, that Christ is the center of our life and we, and we spend our time with him. And it's not about an hour a day, two hours. No, it's a constant communication. It's a constant, intimate walk. It's a constant. It's a constant uh, involving him in your life. Involve and, and you are involved in his life. See, you're exchanging his life. See, you're you have no life down here, so it's his life. And now everything is you do. And where you work and how you conduct your life and, and who you associate with now belongs to him. And and when he and when he decides for these things to go away, they must go away. If he decides to add to you, then he'll add to you. But it's still ultimately his decision. How he wants uh, how he wants your life to be expressed here on earth. So the apostles went out of the high council overjoyed because they had been given the honor being dishonored on the account of his name. So they, they felt like it was an honor to be dishonored amongst men, dishonored amongst the religious sects, but, but their honor was in, in the heavenly realm. They were recognized by God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ for their dedication 
and their uh, perseverance to be able to go through the the difficulties and the trials, and the and the uh, and the rejection on the on the basis of His name. Sorry. So for the reproach of the gospel, uh, where uh, so it says. Every day they went into the temple at home, teaching and preaching Jesus Christ, not, in let, not letting up for a minute. So this was the message Bible. It just popped up. My other one went, kind of went away on me for some reason. Uh, let's see. It says, and... Okay, in Romans 12 and 5 and 6, it says, So we being many are one body in Christ, and every one member one another. We're the body of Messiah, having the gifts different according to the grace that was given to us. Where, rather, prophecy, let prophecy according to the proportion of faith. So, God allows for prophecies to be in, uh, to be a part of the body, part of the function of the body, uh, because there there's necessary involvement of information. So the Spirit involves Himself with the affairs of our lives, and He will instruct us on how we should uh, live our lives, where we should go, who we should meet, where we should preach. And these words of prophecy is to instruct us. And we see this all in the epistles when, uh, you, know, you know, the Spirit, uh, the Spirit spoke expressly to the events that took place during the time that Paul uh, journey, uh, journey in the epistles. Uh, I mean, and he instructed them about the dangers that were going to be in uh, in Jerusalem. He he instructed them about the uh, the dangers of, of being shipwrecked. Let me see. So all these things were given to him. Let me look here. I think it might be in here. All these, all this information, vital information for him to be able to thwart Satan's plan to destroy him. So there, there is prophecy that is being spoken. The Spirit of God has the ability to be able to uh, to speak to us. He can speak privately, or he can allow someone to speak uh, for him. On, on someone else's behalf. And he did this with Paul, even though, uh, you know, I think Agagas uh, bound his hand and told him that if he went down to Jerusalem, that he was, um, he was going to suffer persecution there, could be killed. It was life-threatening. And because of, because of the situation, I believe God uses, he could have spoke to Paul directly, but he uses people to strengthen our faith, to sometimes we uh, may need to hear it from somebody else, because sometimes when we hear God speak, sometimes uh, we question if that is God speaking. We we waver inside. Did I really hear from God? Is that is, is that really His voice? Is He really leading me that way? We start looking for signs. Uh, because it sometimes it's a small, still voice. Maybe it's a uh, a scripture that he's uh, he's highlighted for you, something. But you feel like it's been meant that word was meant for you, but you're not really sure. So what does God do? He speaks through another person to confirm that he is definitely uh, directing this message to you. He's confirming. A, a direction in your life you you may have an impression but not have a confirmation so this is the way he confirms his word to you personally and it's because uh, it, 
because Paul uh, was in uh, in a harm's way. And so he had to hear, he had to hear that this was God's divine purpose for him. This was his will for him because he could be put to death. So he was going to be, uh, he was going to be thrown in prison or he was going to, he, you know, he suffered. He's going to suffer, but he was, but he knew the heart of God. He knew that that was the will of God to go minister in Jerusalem, even if it meant his death. So this is why you, sometimes if you're going to go to a place and it causes you to uh, to be killed, you definitely want to know that that information that it wasn't from you, but that was God's directive for you. You don't want to make those decisions. So you don't want to go up to the Capitol or you want, you don't want to go face, uh, you, you know, these types of persecutions that can throw you into prisons, that can put you to death, go up to the order of the day and correct the order of the day or, or share your t testimony or, or be a, a mouthpiece for God. Because unless you know for sure that what the, what the consequences are. So the consequences was, hey, they could put you in prison. They could torture you. They could, uh, they could, uh, uh, kill you. They can do all these things to you. They can beat you. And he has a testimony that he was stoned. He was beaten. He was he had he was constantly uh, tortured for Christ uh, in many many ways. So knowing and for, uh, and having that confirmation and being having that affirmation from God, affirming him in in in. In putting himself in those dangerous places was a rock you know in the midst of that persecution you 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 hold on to the words that the Lord give you when you're facing those types of difficulties those face the trials because you need to hear the word of the Lord you need to be able to uh, to uh, take hold hold fast to the will of God in the, in those trying times, because if you be just like John the Baptist, he doubted, he doubted after he went into prison. He, he at the at the baptism at the water Jordan, Jesus came and the, he heard, they all heard the voice from heaven that he is the Son of the Living God, my Son, whom I am well pleased. He heard it himself. But then when he was in prison, being tortured, being assaulted, being, being, uh, uh, you know, being, um, uh, being, uh, being afflicted, then he doubted if, if he, if he doubted if God, if that, if Jesus was the Messiah, he, if he was really w was the son of the living God, did he mistake the voice that was from them? Or was it, did he think it was uh, his own mind playing tricks on him? So we can, we can always uh, make excuses, make allowances for things, doubt things. We can, we can be involved directly in the word and still have doubt when the flesh is being afflicted. So this is why we need to hold fast to the words that are given to us directly. So God wants to strengthen us. So, and we need to know his word for, for the day or for that hour. Not We don't need to hear words sometimes that are so far off but we need to hear the the current word of of the hour that is going to to that is going to change your way of thinking going into some of these difficult times so anyways we've got uh let's see and this, and it says in uh, Acts 5, 12 and 18, And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. So there were signs and wonders following them. 
and and it says and of the resters do no man join himself to them but the people magnify them and believers were the more added to the lord multitudes both the men and women in so much that they brought forth the sick into the street and lay them on a bed and a couch that at the least of the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the city round about unto Jerusalem bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed every one of them. So they had signs of wonders. They preached, proclaimed, prophesied and the gift of of healing and the miraculous gifts also were involved in the administration and the ministry of of the apostles which have not ceased they have not ceased but they are still alive as long because he is a living God he's not of the dead he is of the living he is a right now God right time God he is very much very much involved in the affairs of men if we allow him to be in the affairs of men. And like I said, uh, Satan's job is to stop this function of the body of Christ to minister in the earth. And what did happen? As soon as signs and wonders were on display, when miracles started to happen, sickness started uh, to flee, and thing, people started getting uh, this uh, recovery, and the signs and the gifts were following the, the apostles that believed in Jesus because the epitome of seeing signs and wonder is the testimony of Christ and of Jesus Christ. And what it says, and it says, um, Then there came a, also a multitude out of the city round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, they, and they were healed every one then the high priest rose up and all they that were with him which is the sect of the sadducees and were filled with indignation they were angry and laid their hands at the apostles on the apostles and put them put them in a common prison so they imprisoned them and because satan does not want these manifestations to take place so what does he do he uh he he starts to assault the deliverer the ones that is being demonstrated out of so to stop to halt, and to prevent the progression of the gospel we don't want the testimony of yeshua being proclaimed in the earth by the gifts by signs and wonders and and satan loves it when people have said that the the signs of uh, uh, and the wonders has ceased and there is no demonstration of power and God is not using man which he always used man to get his uh, his word out to get his uh, his kingdom out to to express his authority and his power in the earth to uh, to uh because it's a testimony of him what he did on the cross his uh, death burial and resurrection it, it's it's a living faith it's a faith that is alive and active and working and if he can bring doubt if he can bring hopelessness if he can bring uh bring despondency and hopelessness and and uh and uh and and and, and, and discredit it in any way then the act of faith act of believing will not be it will not take take its uh, full course because the gifts are operated like I said on the proportion of faith let it be done unto you according to your faith it's according to your faith the signs and wonders will uh, follow them who believe so it's believing, believing, it's faith. If, if you lose faith, if you, lose, if you have doubt, if you have fear, if you, if you think it because it didn't happen to me, then, there's, then it doesn't happen for anybody. And God wouldn't use these, uh, use people because, and they, and because look at what is on display. So they take the things that are promised us in scripture 
and and say, well, they they have they've been done away with because we have charlatans and we have false teachers and we have we have uh, we have a movement that is uh, an, uh, uh, is antichrist or uh, or uh, diametrically opposed to the things of God. They are working to manipulate. They're working to uh, subvert the gospel, not promote the gospel. They their fruits say otherwise what they represent and they represent the god of this world they represent the mammon they represent the prosperity god doctor they 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 uh they represent uh being uh elevated themselves so this is all about promoting man promoting flesh and using and manipulating the spirit realm not god to and say it's god so that they will have a following well they would they, that they will get and they will deceive many you know jesus is very clear that these things are going to happen many false prophets many false teachers many false signs and wonders in the last day many self-proclaim but it doesn't mean that they're working in the power and the spirit of god they are working in a spirit of error and in a fault in a in a demonic spirit and and they have uh, given themselves over to darkness to be able to perform in the midst and seduce these people they uh and to captivate their minds seduce this is why the bible says uh bewitch they bewitch the people they bring, they they put a spell on the people and the people are unaware. And so you've got people that are, that are uh, you know, trying to expose, absolutely expose it. But then they, but then they take them to the other extreme and says, these have ceased. They're, no, God doesn't work with any, any apostle or prophet today. And the gifts and the offices are not for today. But they, they ended at the canonization of the Bible. And, and if anything that God is speaking today, that it should be in Scripture, and that the and that that is not being uh, being uh, that 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 it's not an open an open because uh, uh, God is alive. That the, the prophecy that the this is an open book. Okay, it's an open book. The Bible says to add or take away from the book of Revelation. But we are epistles written on our hearts. The Bible says you are an epistle read by man. You are an open book. Your life is being written just like the, the men of old. The people that, uh, that were penned in the written word they, 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 they were, they were, this was all compiled and canonized and constructed for us to keep us in the perimeters of God. Because you're walking by faith and not by sight. So it keeps us in the perimeter. But you are an epistle written and read by all men. You are an open book. God is writing his, his message in you. He's right. He is writing because he's demonstrating his revelatory word and his power with signs and wonders, not with wisdom, not with man's knowledge, not with philosophy, not with the world's way of uh, of of determining and 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 evaluation and not according to the world's. Uh, explanation of how things should be we are we are not conformed to the world but we are to be transformed we are to be renewed and we are to put on the mind of christ and we are to allow this message of the word of god yes this word must be written on our heart it is our firm foundation it is the bedrock of what who we are but you are an epistle being read it, the, the new covenant is alive and active. It is, it is, it is uh, moving in our midst. It is a part of our life. We are walking it out daily. They should be writing and, and, and 
writing the things that are done through us <laughs> by the will of God. So this is why uh, this is why it's so terrible for people to uh, to take that that position in that extreme this and say, "Oh God heals." We pray for the prayer six, but it, but there's no dist demonstrated power. There's no uh, no way that God is using one purpose, one man or one woman to be able to demonstrate His power, and that that is such. That is that is that is that is limiting God because God uses temples made without hands to dis demonstrate His power, His kingdom. There would be no reason for the kingdom of God to be manifested in you if you were limited only to the written word, only to the plain sense of the text, only to the to the revelation that man has provided for you. Yes, it, the prophecy is not of any private interpretation. I mean that the that we don't take the word and run with it, but we keep it in the perimeters of the word. We keep it. If the word says it, then I can stand on it and I can believe it and I can receive it for myself. That's the difference. And I can walk out the word that they have initiated and I can finalize it in my life. That's the mystery of the gospel. It's active. It's alive. It, why would God even make our spirits alive unless he wants to demonstrate and manifest, manifest himself in the inner man to express himself outwardly? He, this is, this is, the, 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 uh, this is the, uh, faith and belief of all those who, who walk by faith and actually seeing the signs and wonders follow them and actually experience God. Those who have not experienced God on that level cannot understand or fathom or, or even can comprehend the men that have walked in the power of God. This is why there is such an opposition. There is such dissension and disagreement. So, it, because it is at the proportion of your faith, is whatever you believe. So, uh, let me look here. And let me see. And because the spirit of prophecy, any, uh, and I also in John, I believe, 8, 58, and let's see. That when uh, it says, and Jesus said unto them, 50 and 59, and Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was I am. When he said he was the incarnation of the God I am, I, I was from the beginning, they were wrought because God manifested himself through Messiah. He was that human temple. He was the tab tabernacle. The Bible said the fullness of the God that had was in him bodily, and he was with, uh, full of the Spirit without measure. The Bible says that the, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit made their abode in him. He, he was the apex, the epitome. He was the fulfillment of of the initial uh creation of man because adam was created to express the glory of god to express his power his anointing his essence his his radiance his mag magnificent magnificent majest majestic uh power in the earth he was god's reflection see he was tied he was connected to to the to the father he he received and he and then adam reflect he received from god and then adam reflected what he received the glory the presence the essence this is why the bible says that we are partakers of his divine nature and his divine power because we receive that same glory. 
that same power and that and that same uh, essence within us, that nature to express outwardly, not to contain, not to hide, not to conceal, but to express. This is why we're the light of, that sits on a hill. And we're the salt of the earth because it must be expressed. It must be poured out. It must be, uh, must be, uh, be, ex you know, given, given. God is all about giving. It says, what well, the Bible says, um, give and it shall be given unto you. Shaken, uh, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Will man give unto your bosom? Man will, God will fill and then you pour out. That's how it works. It's a constant filling and a pouring, like filling the, the, the water pots with wine and then giving the water, the wine to the new wine to, to, and serving the new wine to the, to the, to the others so that they can also partake. Cause some people are not at that place. Some people, faith needs to be built up. Sometimes that they need to, they need to get rid of some things. So God can't just pour into you and pour out because you're still contaminated. You still have stagnant water. The water has not been purified. It's not been, because uh, only God deals with living water. He doesn't deal with stagnant, polluted and contaminated water with disease. We've got to remove all the guile and the disease so that the water flows freely through us and then it, when it comes out it comes out like new wine and people can drink of that water or drink of that wine and experience the power of god and experience until they are able to re, uh, remove all the contaminations and defilements of the enemy so this is why uh but it's going to cause problems it says, then they took up stones and cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so they passed by. So they immediately wanted to kill him. They wanted to pick up stones. They wanted to destroy that live, uh, living temple, that, that temple that was alive and demonstrating the power of God. And it's the incarnation of the Godhead manifested in Christ. He and Father, Son, and Spirit. So, and and we get to be partakers of this same incarnation because it's, it's uh, heavenly treasures in earthland vessels. Do you see what I mean? So it's not of our flesh, it's of the Spirit. We, we, don't, we don't take on the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, 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 divine uh, de the deity no not the deity but the but the essence the divine the spirit itself is god and that god comes and lives in you he's the uh, third part of the uh, of the godhead so the, a divine nature a divine power through the spirit is incarnated inside of me in a flesh hidden in earthen vessels but how much are you going to allow that spirit to to uh, uh, remove all the debris, remove all the flesh, remove all the carnality, remove all the, the doubt and fear, change your mind, change your way of thinking, change your, you know, your thoughts to be able to express himself through you. Because this is why we get the mind of Christ. We can be regenerated. And we may, we may be filled with the Spirit, but until your mind is a, at unity with the Spirit, that, it, that they work hand in hand, the mind, your, your carnal mind, your, your limited mind, your, uh, your finite mind can't, uh, can't conceive or comprehend an infinite God. So this is why... We've got to get on the mind of Christ and believe on him that he chooses to express himself through human vessels. He chooses. We're always inferior. No doubt. We're always inferior. And I also want to uh, uh, say that, uh, mention too that, um, uh, Paul, 
uh, the that uh, Timothy, Timothy, yes, Timothy. It, it, Timothy, Paul was speaking to Timothy, and he encouraged Timothy to uh, to not forget the word of prophecy spoken. So if we if if the prophecies only uh, you know only limited to the to the written word. This prophecy was not in scripture. This was a personal prophecy given to Timothy that Paul uh, knew about but did not expound on. So 1 Timothy 4, 14 says, Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy. So the what with the laying on the hands of the presbytery. So the prophecy, what, what, uh, the body of Christ was working within the, the prophecy to encourage Timothy because Timothy was discouraged. To, he had doubt. He was, uh, he was, you know, despondent. And he was feeling, he was feeling the persecution. He was feeling the effects of the enemy, and he, and he didn't. He, Paul didn't want him to lose hope. He wanted him to hold on to the word that was spoken prophetically to him and not to give up. But in due season, if you faint not, those things that God has spoken in your life will come to pass. So it's not, it's just not contained. There's prophecies right here that were, that were spoken by the presbytery, by the, the, by the men of God, the anointed men. That were not penned in scripture so we have to understand this still works today and so uh we're going to look at uh first corinthians because we have to understand the gifts of god if we don't understand the gifts and that they were given to us for the administration of the body not for the world but for the body see there's too many people too many voices out there that are speaking to world to the world to the carnality of the world they're not speaking to the body because the body is supernatural the body is the body of christ in the earth so you may not all be in a collective body but there is a body of christ being formed in the earth so you've got to find the body and you've got to see where the body is uh, actually in, in its proper function. Because this is the proper function of the body of Christ in the earth. Not, at, not to the world, but to the, but to the, to the, uh, the body. That is uh, for, from every generation that has been, this has been laid out so that we stay within the perimeters of of the body and allow the gifts and callings to operate uh, effectively in the body it says and we're looking at first corinthians it says now at 12 it says now concerning spiritual gifts before i would not have you ignorant so that we're we don't want to be ignorant of the gifts god gives us gifts they have not been they are dis they are distributed to men. They're not as a phenomena outside of man. God chooses to use man, and this is where men have a hard time because they do not want to submit to another man. They don't want to take counsel of another man. They don't want to hear a word from another man. Why didn't God tell me directly? Why did He have to speak to you? Yes, there's some wackadoodles out there that are going to speak ignorantly and they're going to speak things that are of course you can discern they're not of god but the problem is then they shut off their whole ears or their, their their whole being from the uh from men that want to speak into their lives because of, of, of for, because of a few that speak in accordance to their own their own minds and bellies and their own spirit and wants to be spiritual and, and they're not spiritual so uh but anyways but it doesn't take away or defect deflect from the gifts that god speaks through men he uses men and we've got to be subject to that if we like it or not 
It's the way God has put it because we're to submit one to another. So, you know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, just like I spoke in Deuteronomy 13. Be careful not to be drawn away by other gods, uh, doctrines of demons, uh, false signs and wonders, uh, false prophetic words that will lead you to the world, that will lead you to idolatry and abstain from those who participate in idolatry even as you were led wherefore i give you to understand that no man speaking by the spirit of god calleth jesus a curse nobody can do that and that no man can say that jesus is lord but but by the holy spirit so anytime you uh you know that jesus is being magnified the enemy is going to, uh, he's going to uh, somehow uh, get in the way of that. Uh, Smith Wigglesworth said, uh, you know a false prophet w when you uh, ask them. You know a demon is in operation. You know when a, 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 spirit, a spirit of error is working in the midst is when they deny Jesus that uh, came from heaven and, and uh, manifest himself in the flesh. Because anyone who denies that is Antichrist. And no demon is going to affirm that. And every occult and every false prophet somehow uh, takes you away from the blood of Jesus. See, the blood of Jesus is the, the avenue that allows the spirit to come in and manifest itself. So we need the blood of Jesus properly applied to our spirit man, to our souls, to our spirit, to uh, dislodge those spirits that uh, of the world and, of, uh, and of, the, of the curses of that we got through sin. We need that uh, that spirit. We need the blood first. It can't. We can't get the spirit, the Holy Spirit, without the blood. And you got to have the blood to properly uh, cleanse you from the sins, the curses, and all the things that were uh, that are uh, that are hindering you to receive from the Spirit of God. Now, the Holy Spirit will come and and make your spirit alive. But then you got this flesh, and you got the, the 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 entanglements of the flesh, and that's what the blood of Jesus, through the work of the Holy Spirit, will start to work on your flesh, so that the Spirit can express itself. It's got to remove all that before the the Spirit can actually expand Himself in you to express outwardly. So uh, so. False teachers will always avoid the topic of the blood of Jesus. They will always uh, subvert that, or they'll always go around it, or they you know, they will this you know the the gospel was it was uh, fumigated or it flowed by the blood of Jesus. It it, it, it was expanded by the blood. It, it's the portal to the supernatural. And needless to say, it was through the martyrs, the blood of the martyrs, that continue to expand the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the earth and the ages. It, because blood on both sides, say the satanic world and God himself, their blood must be on the altar. This is why we are living sacrifice. We must put ourselves on the altar. And Jesus' blood acts as our propitiation. Acts as a, so we could still have the benefits of the blood and the spirit without being put to death. But this sacrifice, this is why Paul says, I am being poured out like a drink offering on the ark. He knew he was going to die. He knew he was going to be put to death. And he, he knew... The, the significance and the benefits of being poured out like a drink offering on the altar of God. Because as soon as he was poured out, he gave his life. It wasn't he took his life, but they took it from him. But he said, I offer myself 
as an offering to the Lord so that this gospel will not end and the message and the revelation that I have gotten from the Holy Spirit will make its way through the ages. So he act as a drink offer. So the Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. No, there is no reconciliation. There is, there is, there is no finality to your sin nature or to your sin problem. So it is the blood that that uh, that we we gain the spirit life. Outside the blood, you cannot. It removes the the evil spirits and allows for the holy spirit to uh to change uh, uh to change and work in your very temple so the blood must be preached the blood must be must be rightly applied the blood must be uh, the righteousness we need the righteousness of christ which is through his blood we need the propitiation we need the atonement we need the 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 things that uh, that have been allowed in us to be removed those demonic curses that are come from disobeying God through sin need to be removed by the blood and sometimes it's an easy it's an easy removement or it can develop into manifestation of demonic power that is manifesting itself and it will be expelled through pockets of air which could be coughing screaming um, sometimes convulsions shaking it can be uh, uh, even sneezing it can be through um, any pockets of air through your body it, it, it comes uh, comes out uh, because they're pneumatic they're their breath so it will come out if you allow the spirit of you yield to it will dislodge itself and it will manifest itself through the avenue of of our mouths or or you know shaking uh you're you're going to get a response I, i'm just going to say you're going to get a response sometimes you go limp because that spirit is in that now not working there's your body will respond to a deliverance no doubt and everybody needs to go through a deliverance because you can't work effectively in the gifts of God, in the operation of God, with demons still abiding in your temple. You've got to dislodge and remove them first so that he, he takes full possession. The spirit must take full possession. If Satan's got a foothold in your life, if Satan's got a, 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 an avenue in your life, if he, you know, that's why the Bible says don't make provision for the devil. Don't, make, don't allow him to get in your, into your life. Because if once he puts a foothold in your life, then the spirit is halted. The act and work of the spirit is halted and cannot be expressed. And it says, and there are different administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operation, but in the same God, which worketh all in all. Worketh all in all. He is, we're in him. He is in us. We're this all in all means we are, we are, don't live outside of him, and he doesn't live outside of us. We, uh, he, our temples are connected to the temples of heaven, and we are a unified uh, vessel, body of Christ, that, uh, that work in the earth, and he moves through us as he wills, but we are also seated in heaven, heavenly places in Christ Jesus at the same time. So this is uh, how God works. It's the end. Uh, all in all but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all so for the one who is given the spirit of word of wisdom to another word of knowledge by the same spirit to another faith in the same spirit to another the gift of healing by the same spirit to another working of miracles to another prophecies to another discerning of spirits to another di diverse tongue to another the interpretation of tongues but all these work is that one and the self, self same spirit dividing every man uh, man uh, severally as he wills so he's he divides it, it to whom he he uh, chooses so this is not it's not a self appointed it is uh, demonstrated by the spirit uh, or distributed I'm sorry 
by the spirit and now you just need to walk it out you don't have to conjure it up you just walk out the gifts and callings that he's called that he's that you're called in and then he and when he chooses to work uh hit the gift of prophecy or the gift of a discerning spirit or the gift of tongues interpretation the gift of faith the gift of miracles then he will do so at his will not at your will it's not your it's it's at it and and that's where we kind of don't understand it's not in accordance to what i feel or what i think or how i want it to happen no it's in accordance to his, his will for by one spirit are we all baptized in one body whether we be jew or gentile whether we be bound or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit so we're all we're all baptized into the faith jew and gentile baptized conformed to his death, risen into his likeness of his resurrection, and we all drink or partake of the same spirit. We are unified with, uh, with heaven, the host of heaven, through the spirit. For the w w body is not one member, but many. If, if the foot say, because I am the hand, am I, uh, am I not the body? Is therefore not the body, and the ear say, because I am not the eye, am I not the body? And the whole body where I, where there be a hearing, or the whole hearing where there be smelling. But now hath God set members, every one, in one body, as it pleases him. And if they were of one member, were, were the body, but are now, but now are they members, yet one body. So we can't choose the function of the body. He chooses it for us. And so let's drop down. It says, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, unto these we bestow more abundant honor. And our, see, we've got it vice versa. The things that we, that we think that are honorable, we esteem. But God said it's the ones that you think least of are the ones that he deems honorable because they give service to the body in, in without any applause or, you know, acclamations. They do it because they have, they uh, they love Jesus. They love His ministry, and they want to please Him, not to get the praises of men. So we don't give honor to those that are in the limelight. We give honor to those that are that do in secret. Then God will reward openly. For our com coming parts have not need, but God has tempered the body together. Hallelujah. He has tempered all this, and we've got to learn to uh, to be able to um, work together in unity, without without division, without animosity and strife, without division, without jealousy, without envy, envy. Having given more abundant honor to the part which lack, that there should be no schism in the body. But that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, the whole, everybody rejoices. Now you are the body of Christ. The members are partakers. And God has set some in the church for apostles, secondary prophets, third teachers. After the miracles, the gifts of healings, the helps. The governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do they all speak with tongues? Do they all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gift, yet know unto, uh, unto you a more excellent way. But covet earnestly the best gift, and yet show unto you more excellently the way and the best give is prophecy and that and we see that in um uh in the uh, corinthians 14. the best gift is prophecy because it proclaims the testimony of jesus christ uh, and so anyway so the the gifts and the calling of god are without repentance he's the administrator of the gifts and uh, so 
the first Corinthians 12, seven through 11 gives us the, 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 uh, the gifts. And I want to say the gift of wisdom must, uh, must, uh, accompany by love because love, it, you know, because we get puffed up in in our wisdom or revelatory uh, uh, word that God, you know, you know, gives or bestows upon. Sometimes we can use that wisdom, but if we get puffed up or we get arrogant and we're not expressing the love, we're, we we want the revelatory word or the wisdom of God to be able to minister. To the people and we're not we're not gloating or people should not gloat but should be able to love the person to give them the proper word of wisdom not to hoard it for themselves not to keep it for themselves but to share it that's why so love it must occupy uh, the, the company or you must cope with it with love C knowledge knowledge brings joy so that's the fruit so joy must be accompanied by knowledge that that brings excitement and brings joy it br br brings joy to the, the to the hearer it brings joy to the person delivering it so joy is expressed faith there's the the faith the the gift of faith should always operate in the spirit of peace because peace without faith it's impossible to please god and and God works in order. He works in decently and orderly fashion. And faith is putting at ease those things that Satan causes confusion. He put so faith. Uh, so chaos is the uh, is is the opposite of faith uh, of peace. So our faith and our trust and our and and our willing to step out in faith must be accompanied by peace because we must have the peace of god knowing that he's going to he's not going to leave us hanging <laughs> he's got our back he's he's going to secure us he's going he's going to work out his his word in us he's not going to give us a a word of prophecy and not fulfill it he's not going to give us a word of knowledge about someone's condition without it being true so there's accuracy there so because when you walk out of faith you're speaking it i mean it's got to be in, in in perfect agreement perfect harmony perfect accuracy and perfect uh, unity and so when you so is walking out in the depths of the water you know walking on water and your eyes are fixed on jesus but as soon as fear comes upon you you will lose out you'll you lose out that out with that supernatural ability because your faith has been tested and tempted and now you're doubting even that even those things that are supernatural so faith must be be uh, uh be coupled with peace the gift of healing if God gives you the gift of healing, long suffering and forbearance, you must be willing to tarry with that person. You must be willing to uh, toil. You must pray earnestly. You must uh, sit at a, the bedside of a, of a sick person. You must endure with long suffering. You, you can't have instantaneous healing sometimes with healing. It takes a process. It takes time to, to, uh, to get into a position where you can effectively move the hand of God, move the situation to be able to minister effectively to the sick person. Sometimes there's blockage. There's doubt. There's demonic, uh, there, demonic uh influences there so there's demonic uh hindrances there that must be removed before a healing can take place it it, it there you know those things all have to be uh be expressed to the one that you're giving the word of of knowledge to about their condition and if it has to do with demonic most people they they resist that so and I believe sickness is a has a satanic origin, just like uh, uh, Smith Wilkersworth expresses too. You deal with sickness as an enemy. You deal with it as an enemy, and you must be long suffering with the uh, the uh, the the person. You fight against the enemy, 
you're 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 aggressive with the enemy you master over the enemy but you have to be careful not to hurt the person that the enemy is using or the person the the enemy is holding in bondage or in captivity or in sickness so you know there is a there is a a service of being compassionate and long suffering in the administration of gifts of healing because there is a human person that is involved that you do not want to offend or hurt while you are in battle with the enemy uh, working a mi uh, miracles gentleness being gentle in the expressions of miracles prophecy is self-control that you don't go outside of the proportion that God has laid out in scripture or in because it doesn't contradict it always they are they are they always uh, are in conjunctions uh, uh, the prophecy should always uh, be uh, being uh, can be compatible to scripture and it should it, it, we should confirm the act of prophecy in scripture and we don't go outside Side of the spirit so there is discipline and self-control that is accompanies prophecy discernment of spirits faith we must have faith we must believe God and have faith that uh, that uh, what God is showing us in the supernatural discerning of spirits good and bad that you know we got to believe God and it's acted in faith tongues meekness we need to be meek and humble we're yielding our, 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 our mouths. We're yielding our tongue. The Bible says that the tongue is the hardest thing to tame. So we must be in the frame, uh, the frame of mind of being meek and lowly. And that we speak to God and not to men. And then the interpretation of tongues is temperance. That we temper all those things by the word of God and by a good attitude. So I thought that was a good revelation there that we God will develop these nine gifts before he will use us in the gifts of God as a body to, uh, to function, uh, to function properly to the people that believe God is not working with outsiders. He's working with believers that that is such that is so different. Because the unbelievers don't believe. So why are we, God is not speaking to the unbeliever. He's not speaking. But this is why we uh, covet prophecy. Because prophecy has to do with the unbeliever. Has to do with the unbeliever. And I'm going to read this. This came up. Uh, pursue love. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, chapter 14. To pursue love and earnest desire of the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. Covet it. For one who speaks in tongues speaks not to men, but to God. For no one understands him. No one understands when you are speaking to God alone, that groaning within, uh, that words cannot be uttered. The, the Spirit will take over your tongue and express the will of God through and the worship of God through uh, through words that cannot you cannot understand or anybody around you can't understand so it's not a dialectic word it's not it's not a language it's a language that is spiritual that it's we pray a, a, like the angels we speak we speak like the angels the Bible said that is a spiritual supernatural manifestation of speaking to the heavenly kingdom or to god himself directly so we will have tongues of angels that's what it says uh it says and on the other hand the one who prophesies speaks to people for the up upbuilding or for the edification in the king james and that word is to build up the the person do you see to it's like a construction of a house you are constructing a house you're preparing a house you're framing out the house and God will use prophecy to start forming that frame do you see because we build on the foundation of Christ and on his written word but then there is a house being built that must be rightly framed and that is 
that is for you alone. It's personal. It's personal. So the prophecy is for a personal uh, edification and encouragement and consolation, comfort when you go through hard times. The one who speaks in tongues build up himself. Those who are spiritual speak in tongues. They build up their most holy faith through the act of speaking in tongues. But the mind is not fruitful. But one who prophesies builds up the church. We're not only building ourselves personally in the, uh, in the, in the uh, framework of God, but we're also building the congregation or the body of Christ in, another, in the framework that God has laid out. Now I want all, all to speak in tongues, but even more to prophesy. The one who prophesy is greater than the one who speaks in tongues unless someone interprets because you don't have any understanding so the unbeliever cannot understand or or the even the believer cannot understand how god is building up their church building them up personally how their life is going to look like in the eyes of god without it being expressed through a individual or through your you know, or god can give you a prophetic word uh for yourself but it must be it must be articulated. It must be. It must come forth. It must come out. Words are power. They're spirit. They're life. They must to be able for that word to take root, take faith. It must be expressed. You know, you know the. It's by the word of faith. We believe by not that we manifest anything. Not that we have manifest words or we can speak outside of God and manifest anything in this uh, in the natural. No, we're talking about. God speaking, and it, and this is God's operation to make it happen, to manifest that what His will is for your life, not you. You're not creating things. You're not manifesting things. You're not, you're not using words out of, out of out of out of context, out of alignment of God's will for you personally. You can't say I'm a prophet. And, and proclaim and speak a prophet prophetically when God has not given you the gift of prophecy or giving or put you in the office as a prophet. So, I mean, it, you can want one thing, but God has another thing for you. You can't usurp a gift or a, or a, or an office. Just on the notion because that, you know, that, that, cause you want it or you, you desire it or, it, or you covet the, the, uh, the, the things that it brings because it brings attention. Prophecy, working in signs and wonders bring attention. And so people covet these things out of the wrong motives because it brings them, uh, it, you know, brings the, the, the spotlight on them. And not on God. So we've got to be careful. That's why I read these things. You've got to work in self-control. you got to work in meekness and temperance. you got to be long-suffering and gentle. Be able to love and have joy and peace. Have the spirit of the faith of God to move mountains. Be able to, to uh, keep everything contained in the, in the fruits of the spirit. So that you don't get outside of the spirit and start usurping all these benefits for yourself. Money, wealth, fame, tension. Those are the things that God will, he will, he will reject. He will disregard. He will, he will push away. And, and so people act like they're acting like a fool. And saying foolish things just because they want the attention. They want the notoriety. And, and God is not with that. And God will judge that. But we, uh, but we still need to be on the side of faith and believe that these things still can happen today. Now, brother, if it comes to you speaking in tongues, how will it benefit you unless I bring you some revelation or knowledge or prophecy of the teaching? If, uh, if even lifeless instruments such as a flute and harp do not give distinct notes, how would in, anyone know what to play? And if the bundle gives you, uh, gives a, a distinct, indistinct note sound, indistinct sound, sorry, uh, who will get ready for the battle? So I'm trying to hurry because I've been on here for a while. Sorry, I'm rush, uh, rushing through this. 
So with yourself, if you, with your tongue, you utter speech that is not intelligible. See, that's what they say. It's not, it, it's not intellectual. It's not intelligible. And so it must be gibberish. It, it, so, cause we, my mind can't comprehend it. So they, they make fun of it. They mock it. They scorn it. Cause it's in, as in, as in, intelli it's, uh, it's not intelligible. Uh, it's, uh, how will anyone know what it says? For you will be speaking into the air. See, people who speak into the air trying to manifest things, they're going to get a spirit behind it, but it's not going to be God's spirit. Because, they, you know, the, uh, Satan will latch on those false prophetic words, those false declarations and those false proclamations, and he'll, and, and, words and incantations that are all witchcraft and he'll latch on it because if it's not coming from god it's it's coming from the flesh and it's then it's satan's going to take hold of that and he's going to and he's going to run with it and use it for his benefit and to deceive many and if the bundle gives an indistinct sound who will get ready for the battle so with yourselves if with your tongue you utter speech that is not intelligible. How will anyone know that what you're saying for you will be speaking into the air? These are doubtless many different languages in the world and none is without meaning. But if I do not know the meaning of the language, I will be a foreigner to the speaker and the speaker a foreigner to me. So this is why when we're assembled together, there must be tongues and interpretation. Tongues do come forth comes in power it will it will you know it will take over the service if it's from god it will get louder and it will take over but but that tongue must be coupled with interpretations because the mind must be able to comprehend it of the spirit strive to excel to building the church therefore one who speak in tongues should pray that he uh, that he may interpret for if i pray in a tongue my spirit prays but my mind is unfruitful who am i to do i will pray with the spirit but i will also pray with my mind also i will sing a praise with the spirit but i will sing with my mind also otherwise if you give thanks with your spirit how can anyone in the position of an outsider can say amen to your thanksgiving when he does not know what you're saying. So, for you may be given things well enough, but the other person is not built up. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than you ought. See, there's discipline, self-control, temperance, and the gifts <laughs> that we must... <laughs> We must first cultivate in our lives before the, 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 for we act in these gifts. Uh, and it is all by faith. And so, but we get the, the, the Holy Spirit and with the evidence of speaking in tongues initially to build up our faith, build up us in a spiritually heavenly kingdom, to build us into developing both the fruits and the gifts to be proper administrators of the the gift and the office itself so now that i speak in tongues more than you nevertheless in the church i would rather speak five words of my mind order to instruct than ten thousand words in tongues because in the church you know that's the that's the 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 uh that's the subject of the matter it's within the church Brother, do not be children in your thinking, but be infants in evil, but in your thinking be mature. In the law it is written, by people of strange tongues or staggering lips, and by the lips of foreigners will I, Gentiles, will I speak to these people. And even they will not listen to me, says the Lord. Thus tongues are a sign not for believers, but for unbelievers. So the sign that tongues are going forth with the interpretation shows it fulfills this prophecy and it fills, uh, fulfills the, uh, the, the 
supernatural giftings of God. If they're, the whole church comes together and speak in tongue and the outsider or the unbeliever enters, will they not say that you are out of your mind? But if all prophesy and an unbeliever or outsider enters in, now we're speaking to the outside world, he is convicted by all or he's convicted. He is called to an account by all. The, uh, the secrets of his heart are disclosed and so falling on the face, uh, falling on his face, he will worship God and declare that God is really among you. So what then, brother, when you come together in, in one, in one, in the unity of the assembly ha has a hymn or a lesson or a revelation, a tongue or an interpretation, let all things be done for building up like a frame construction. If any, uh, if any speak in a tongue, let him be only two or, or at most three, each taking their turn let's, and let someone interpret. But if there be no one to interpret, let each man keep silent, keep it within themselves in the church and speak to himself and to God alone. Let two or three prophets speak. Let the other weigh. So you're weighing out the prophet's words. What is say? So we're judging it to see if it's from God. We should try the spirits to see if they're of God. If a revelation is made to another sitting there, let the first be silent. For you can all prophesy, can all prophecy one by one, so that all may learn and be encouraged. And the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not the God of confusion, but of peace, as it all is in the church of the saints. So we are, there is discipline within the body of Christ, and we need to be able to uh, submit one to another, keep things in decent and orderly. Pray with your language, but keep silent if there's no interpretation. You can pray in the assembly, but just keep it between you and God. But if you are speaking in tongues, pray that there's an interpreter. So there is not confusion. This is all about the unbeliever, the church, because there's unbelievers that come. And, the, and people that are not familiar with the gifts. So we've got to show ourselves with some sobriety and some uh, sanity. Well, that's what he's saying. We can't just get caught up in the motion and emotion and in the, the, in the moment because it's an exuberating power. It, it is a power that you just don't want to depart from. You want that power to continue to move through you because it's such a life-giving power so life-giving and I know we become addicted to that life power but this is why God says we got to put constraints on it because it is an energized power that it, that flows you like fire I said like it's an energetic power that flows up into your body you're in power you get goosebumps you get you get you know you get strength, you get capabilities, you got, you get, you want to dance, you want to, you want to sing, you want to express those emotions, but we also need to uh, contain the emotions so that the word of the Lord can go forth. So we have to be disciplined to want to hear the word of God, want to receive the message of God, receive uh, the corrections of God, the instructions of God. But we also want to not do away with the emotional part because God's power will come upon those with expression, with feeling, with, with might, with strength, with, uh, with exuberation. There, and, with, and then sometimes when the power of God comes up on you, then you've got the, the, uh, the spirits uh, that are in the flesh will start to act of eight two, and they'll cause you to do uh, act in some ways. You know, you'll shake, you'll fall, and sometimes you'll, you know, because God is re loosening those bondages. So your your body's going to have a response 
to either from God or from the uh, uh, demonic. Sometimes we can't discern from which it is, and it's not for us to discern because it's, if it was, God would would say, hey, this is from an evil spirit or this is a... But the objective is, is to get that evil spirit out and for you to experience the power of God. And sometimes they collide. Sometimes they collide. So we're not to judge it with a harsh judgment like most people do. They, 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 they're so judgmental about people falling forward, people falling backwards, people dancing, people shaking, people falling uh, or running and dancing and stuff, or what, however they want to express themselves. You, sometimes you got to take it in stride. You got sometimes it's flesh and sometimes it's the move of the spirit being activated by both the Holy Spirit and a demonic spirit that is being being exposed and expelled because you will shake. You will you will have a response either way. So this is why people they refrain from it. They resist it because they don't want to be made a fool of. They don't want they don't want to think that people think of them as being uh, unintelligible that they are that they are acting crazy hey you are connected to a spirit realm you are connected either with a with god that wants to use your temple and he is removing things out of your temple and some of those things are demonic and they like the the just like uh in the gospel the bible says when when jesus came into the synagogue the devil threw the man down at the feet of Jesus. It wasn't the man that threw him down. It was the reaction of the spirit that God was targeting to uh, deliver that man. And that man torn the guy. See, the spirit can do that. Evil spirits can do that. They can make you respond. But the ultimate goal is to be delivered, to be set free, to become the instrument of God to be to be filled with God without any resistance. And on that, I'm going to end. And you should just say. Amen.